That is significant. That puts it at the sixth biggest earthquake ever recorded uh, on Earth. So this is a substantial earthquake. And although not all earthquakes will generate tsunamis, this one has generated a series of tsunamis which are propagating away from this epicenter um, off Russia. Especially. There's been a significant earthquake happening on the uh, Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. That's the sort of part of Russia, north of China, that extends in the Pacific Sea. And this is on what we call the Pacific Ring of Fire. This is an area, region around the entire Pacific Rim, renowned for significant earthquakes. The earthquake we've just experienced there is 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. That is significant. That puts it at the sixth biggest earthquake ever recorded uh, on Earth. So this is a substantial earthquake. And although not all earthquakes will generate tsunamis, this one has generated a series of tsunamis which are propagating away from this epicenter um, off Russia. We've already seen some um, four, four foot waves hitting Japan. Uh, similarly, we're getting four foot waves approaching Hawaii and hitting Hawaii. And so there is a Pacific wide warning of tsunamis, which basically is telling people to move away from the beaches, for sea defenses to be put up and preparation for potential um, aftershocks as well. The earthquakes occur where we get tectonic plates, normally where we get tectonic plates rubbing against each other. So you've got the big Pacific plate, you know, the earth is made up of these sort of um, geology plates, these geophysical plates, and the earth is um, sort of where these plates rub, where they sort of join, um, we get stresses building up and then every so often we get a sudden release of pressure and part of the seabed flips up. And so it's that flip that causes the tsunami. And not all flips, not all sort of earthquakes will generate these. Some might be a very different characteristic, but this is obviously one that flipped up. It's a bit like throwing a very, very large rock into the sea and then watching the waves propagate away from that rock, um, that splash. And so that's what's happened in this case, and that's why this particular one has generated a tsunami. It's not huge. It's not one that's going to cause mass devastation, but it will cause coastal flooding and it will cause damage. And it does put lives at risk if people don't move to high ground. And that's the key message. Once you hear the warnings, the Pacific is very good at tracking tsunamis. There's an early warning system across the entire region, um, but also you know, warnings have gone out uh, as far away as South America for people to avoid the coastlines to move to high ground, certainly for the next 24 or 48 hours. And it can take 24 hours for the waves to cross the Pacific from the Kamchatka Peninsula all the way down to, say, Chile and Peru. In these areas, the, the countries are used to uh, tsunami warnings and the public would have been trained already that the first thing to do is stop what you're doing and move to high ground, you know, lock up your houses, lock up your shops um, and just move as quickly as possible in a calm way to high ground. And once you're in high ground, you are safe from these uh, events. Yeah, it was uh, the epicenter, the, the hypocenter of the earthquake was recorded at 22 kilometers depth. But again, when we think about earthquakes, um, we're actually looking at how the earth plate moves as a plane rather than a point. So we're actually looking at like a 500 kilometer, 400 to 500 kilometer long distance of the fault and then down to around 100 kilometer width of the fault rupture. But this earthquake of a magnitude 8.8, .8, we were looking at how we're looking at the, the fault plane moving in, in the scale of up to 10 meters along the surface, but that translates to around three to four meter of vertical movement of the, the water. So imagine that the earthquake is stuck and then when the earthquake happens, this translates to an uplift of that three to four meters of volume of water and that gets spread out. That's why the tsunami is we're looking at a trans-Pacific tsunami this time. Um, right now in the, in the modeling that, that is, uh, has been, been modeled from the United States Geological Survey, with, with the scale of this earthquake, we're, we're looking at the distance of the fault of 400 kilometer long. And I say 500 because we learned from the 2010 Chile earthquake that an equivalent magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake can can have that distance of 500 kilometer, and that's why it translates to 
up to three to four meters of that vertical movement. Yeah, I, I think with my expertise, I would advise to look at the tsunami warning, whether the forecast is, um, is expected to have how many meters of tsunami run up at each location, and it updates very frequently, so, so I would advise to look at that. But um, at the moment, as far as Japan or Philippines and the coast of Taiwan, we could expect up to one, one to three meters of that tsunami run up height, but it depends on the, the coastline as well. So the, the Tohoku earthquake in Japan in 2011 and the Sumatra earthquake in 2004, both are moment magnitude 9.1. It might seem not so far off from the magnitude 8.8, .8, but it, in terms of energy, it's it's three times stronger. Imagine the 8.8 .8 is a, a, I drop a rock in, in a lake and you see the ripples, that's the energy. Imagine you have that rock like three times bigger. So in terms of the earthquake moment magnitude, the, er the energy of the 2011 and 2004 um, earthquake in Sumatra and in, in Japan, it's actually three to four times bigger. And when we looked at the size of the rupture, it, it spans 100, uh, a 1,000 kilometer long. So that's a double 8.8 .8 that what we're seeing right now. And that's why, that's why the tsunami in, in those um, events were much more devastating.